Well, for many U.S. presidents, major moments of their lives happened under our uh, Florida sunny skies. A relic of the darkest days of the Kennedy, Kennedy administration is actually right here in Florida. A lot of people don't even know about it. Here's Fox 13's Evan Axelmink taking us to JFK's secret hideaway. The ride to the 1960s takes 20 minutes. To feel what it was like back then takes a twist and a deep breath. You want to go first? Or? Sure. October 1962. Soviets, communists, Cuba, missiles. 90 miles between them, us, and the end. Those missiles would have gotten here within 10 minutes. So even a warning, where, where do you go in 10 minutes? To halt this offensive buildup. For 13 days, no one knew if the warnings would become war. They had designated shelters all over South Florida. That includes this part-time Florida man. It's very solid. It's, it's solid steel. Buried into the side of a man-made hill on Peanut Island is where JFK would have been taken if the big one hit while he was in between laps or laughter at their family compound on Palm Beach. Nobody knew that they built this here in 62. That was pretty much a secret that was not covered in any of the local papers. A mile and a half was between the president and protection from nuclear fallout. This would have been central command. It's, it is hard to imagine that. It's especially hard when you see the disrepair. The 1800 square foot space was a museum until two years ago when the operator's lease ended and the port of Palm Beach took it over. They found mold, termites, and a generally unsafe space. It'll cost $4.5 million to restore the Kennedy bunker and the properties around it. To show uh, future generations, including our generation, that we lived through it. Growing up in Cuba, Port Director Manuel Almira lived on the other side of the crisis. As the president would have been here, I would have been in a bunker much, much smaller than this underneath my home that my father went ahead and built. The president's house was bought in the 1920s by his dad as a getaway from Massachusetts winters. Growing up, JFK sailed, golfed, recuperated from World War II, and partied on Palm Beach with friends and family. He eventually came as president-elect to form a cabinet. His children were seldom far. Reminders of the stakes. As they contemplated what this world could become, uh, and realizing, you know, what can I do as this one human being to stop this from happening? President Kennedy didn't just spend time at his family compound. He also came here, down the street, to St. Edward's Church and prayed in this exact pew. We, of course, can't know exactly what was going through his mind, but one imagines that he prayed he would never have to go to that bunker for real. We all have anxiety in our lives from day to day, but that's a level of anxiety that I don't think any of us can imagine when the entire world's fate is in your hands. To Palm Beach State historian Ginger Peterson, that JFK never needed to come here is exactly why it should be restored. It's the importance of negotiation. You can't say, I want, you know, it's my way or the highway. You have to be able to compromise with your perceived enemies. Each of these missiles, in short, is capable of striking Washington, D.C. To get the Soviets to remove the missiles from Cuba, Kennedy promised not to invade the island again. He also promised, in secret, to remove missiles from Turkey. But here you can actually experience it and live it and, and see what it would have been like to have been in the middle of the worst of crisis the Earth had ever faced. Secrets abound, even in the sunshine. In Palm Beach County, Evan Axelbank, Fox 13 News.